Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily News. I'm Nicholas Richardson. One of Poland's most prominent physicists has created the fastest quantum memory known to mankind, beating any other academic center. This is a Polish opportunity for a breakthrough in physics. The discovery could revolutionize many areas of life, from those of information to the early detection of various diseases. It's worth mentioning that the scientist is a young man, so the future of quantum physics looks all the more promising. Professor Michal Paniak, together with his team, have created the fastum quantum memory on Earth. This is a great success for a pole. This is a very great achievement, which is noticed all over the world, as evidenced by very high-quality publications and invitations to international conferences. The Warsaw Center, thanks to Michal's achievements, is becoming visible all over the world. At the same time that work on the innovative technology began in Poland, the Chinese also began working on the same thing. When we published the results, we found that ours was three times more capacious. What essentially is quantum memory? What we have been able to create is a memory that remembers very many protons at the same time, stores them for some time, perhaps processes them, and then performs some quantum operations. In other words, it's a new kind of storage medium that collects more data more quickly and more efficiently. Where will the innovative discovery be best applied? The application possibilities are very many. That is, signal processing, quantum computing, quantum sensors, and finally quantum communication. Which of these applications will find their way into use? That remains to be seen. The place where we will feel quantum physics the most will be in the medical sector. We will have the ability to diagnose various kinds of diseases more quickly. Another area could be quantum cryptography, where encrypted information will be impossible to break, because quantum physics is one of the most fascinating fields of science, which will reveal many more secrets. Marcin Bakalarski, TV Republica. The first day of the 32nd International Defence Industry Exhibition in Kielce has ended. This year's largest Polish defence industry trade fair is being held under the banner of Poland's 25 years in NATO. Were any important decisions made during the fair? This year's fair is taking place in the shadow of the Russian-induced war in Ukraine. Polish President Andrzej Duda, honorary patron of the Kielce Fair, visited the stands of partners in the modernization of the Polish army. Manufacturers of military equipment bought from the United States and South Korea when Marosz Błaszczak was still in charge of the Ministry of National Defense. We are spending more and more on defense. So this year's budget was already 4.2% of our GDP for defense. And next year, as we heard today from the Deputy Prime Minister, the Minister of Defense, 4.7% of GDP is planned for defense. So almost 200 billion złoty will be spent on defense in the next budget. We are signing more contracts, which is very important that not only for the purchase of equipment from the United States and South Korea, and not only Apache attack helicopters or Korean Chunmo FA-50 or F-35 attack helicopters from the US, but, ladies and gentlemen, also our equipment and our technical thought. At this year's fair, an executive contract was to be signed for the delivery of the next batch of 180 Korean K-2 tanks, still negotiated by the United Right. It may be worrisome that these landmark agreements are missing. I can't imagine that the next batches not be accompanied by agreements for servicing these tanks in Poland. This is necessary. Besides, what was signed today is rather small compared to last year's fair. Instead, the current leadership of the Ministry of Defence signed three contracts for radio receivers for the Vistula and Nariv anti-aircraft systems, HIAB cranes, and contamination detection systems for Rossomac wheeled transporters. And the head of the Ministry of Defence, Władysław kosiniak kamish is expected to promote Polish armaments export products from now on. This is to show that we can work together, that the executive branch, the government with the president, work together for the security of Poland, but also for the promotion of the Polish economy and the Polish defence industry in the world. The Presidential National Security Office, in cooperation with the Ministry of Defence, has created a catalogue featuring technologies and innovative solutions developed by Polish defence companies. This increase in offerings testifies to how the market is changing and how many new players are entering the market, small and medium-sized companies, of which we are generally not aware, which are growing very quickly, but need to aggregate capital for this growth. The catalogue, created by the National Security Bureau, includes more than 200 products from 61 Polish companies, both private and state-owned. Radosław Jankiewicz, TV Republica. It's censorship and attack on freedom of speech. That's how Elon Musk views the decision by the leftist authorities in Brazil. The billionaire's X portal has been blocked in the country, and anyone trying to use it faces large fines. Officially, it's all about procedures, but Musk's portal, which is popular in Brazil, featured a lot of information inconvenient to those in power. 
Brazilians won't read about it on the ex-portal because they can no longer access it. A Brazilian court has blocked a very popular service in the country. Ana, a student from Sao Paulo, started each day by looking at X. People my age look for information mostly on the internet and the X portal is a cool service. There I had access to world news and also entertainment. The blocking of the portal is the result of a month-long dispute between Brazil's leftist authorities and ex's owner Elon Musk, who has made no secret of his conservative views. Musk failed to appoint a legal representative for the X portal in Brazil, which the court obliged him to do, and the judge decided that in that case the service would not be there at all, which the Brazilian president applauds. Just because a guy has a lot of money doesn't mean he can do whatever he wants. Who is this Musk anyway? What is he thinking? Elon Musk thinks that what the Brazilian authorities are doing is simply censorship. An attack on freedom of speech just because information inconvenient to the ruling left appeared on the X portal. Freedom of speech is the rock of democracy and pseudo judges in Brazil are destroying it for political ends. What's more, Brazilian authorities are introducing draconian penalties for anyone who tries to circumvent the blocking of the X portal, the equivalent of up to 35,000 zwati a day. I don't know how far they will go to restrict people's freedom to search for information. The leftist government will not back down. Punishments will also extend to internet providers who fail to block X. The court has already cut off services and blocked the accounts of another Elon Musk company, Starlink, which delivers internet to the most inaccessible places, among them to this school located in the Brazilian state of Amazonas. Internet access has opened up new opportunities for our students to learn and explore the world. This is not the first such story. The European Commission also accused Elon Musk's portal of breaking the law. Experts are under no illusion. The leftist authorities in Brazil are all about depriving people of access to information from various sources to manipulate them more easily. Musk, on the other hand, has characterized Jimorais as an authoritarian censor, and his claims have been amplified by Brazil's political right. Brazil is an important market for X, with tens of millions of regular users. Elon! Billionaire Elon Musk is sure to get his way, even without access to the large Brazilian market. And the country's authorities are hitting their own citizens first and foremost. Martin Shevchak, TV Republica. Banning the use of phones in schools, not only in class, but especially during recess, is a topic that continues to stir emotions in Poland. Belgium has joined the ranks of countries that have decided to take such a step. It was previously introduced in Spain, Sweden and the Netherlands. In Poland, it is the headmaster who decides and has the right to introduce such a ban at school. With the start of the school year, the topic of banning phones in schools has returned. In Poland, the school principal decides. The controversy over whether it is possible and to what extent to interfere with what a student has with him or herself, with what a student does, is an endless quandary and its purpose is to disorganize rather than to develop a consensus. While the ban on using phones in class is obvious, using them during recess is up to the principal's discretion. There are schools where students are not allowed to use their phones at recess. By doing so, they build bonds with their peers. The use of digital information technology by students makes these relationships and the world fictitious. It goes against the idea of school. I'm in favour of clear rules for phone use in schools. If we were to talk about the danger, then a smartphone can pull our child away from being with others, with children and teachers. There are countries that recognise the negative impact of phones on children's development and have enacted a ban on the use of telephones in basic schools. In Poland, the discussion has been going on for years. In my opinion, they should not use cell phones in schools, during lessons for sure, maybe during recess. First of all, distraction from classroom activities. In my opinion, in elementary schools, children should socialize with each other and not sit on cell phones. Experts are sounding the alarm. Children and teens who use smartphones excessively have memory and concentration problems and learning problems. So it's worth ensuring that their real world is interesting enough that they don't want to escape too often into the virtual one. Anna Gerka, TV Republica. That's the news. Thank you for watching. And from me, it's have a good night and a better tomorrow.